in order to have a crack at some more sophisticated boundary value problems that will involve different geometries than we've seen so far, we need to have a flashback to ordinary differential equations to visit one little mini topic that involves a particular equation type we will have to know how to solve. And that is a Cauchy-Euler equation. So this is an ordinary differential equation. It's second order. It doesn't look that drastically different from equations you've seen before. It's homogeneous. That's nice. And it, it almost looks like a constant coefficient ordinary differential equation, but it isn't because there are instances of x in front of the derivative terms, but there is a noticeable pattern here. So on the y double prime term, you have an x squared. On the y prime term, you have an x to the first. And on a y term, which is the zeroth derivative, so to speak, you have an x to the zero. Well, you don't see that because it's just a one. So for every derivative term that's present, the y, the y prime, and the y double prime, you have a power of x in front of it where the power of x matches the order of the derivative. And there you have a Cauchy-Euler equation. These will show up through separation of variables on our partial differential equations coming up very soon. These can be solved relatively quickly and easily. It turns out that if we were to put a substitution into play and turn our original equation, which isn't a constant coefficient differential equation, into a new equation, that new equation would actually have constant coefficients. So it turns out that throwing into the mix a substitution x equals e to the s, which will turn our independent variable from x's into s's, we change the Cauchy-Euler equation into a constant coefficient differential equation, and those we know how to solve. And then once we solve that new one, we revert back and undo the substitution to get back to the original variable. So here is an example. This is a Cauchy-Euler equation on the y double prime term. There's an x squared. On the y prime, there's an x. And on the y, there's a 3. This is in the generic format for a Cauchy-Euler equation. There are three constants to identify. The, le the leading constants on each term, a, b, and c. Those happen to be 1, negative 3, and 3. And so if we were to go through the process of doing a substitution of x equals e to the s, we would turn our Cauchy-Euler equation without constant coefficients into a new equation that does have constant coefficients. The trade-off is we've also swapped the variable. With the numbers we have in play, a is 1, b is negative 3, and c is 3, the equation evolves to this. We know how to solve that. The nice thing about this process is that you notice we didn't actually do the substitution. We already know what the end result is going to be. And as a bonus, at the end of these slides, we'll work through that substitution once just to see it happen in its big formal setting. But knowing the end result means we can skip over all the intermediate steps. You don't have to actually do the substitution. You just have to write down what the result's going to be. And so now we have to solve this constant coefficient, homogeneous, second order, ordinary differential equation. Whew, that's a lot of buzzwords for that. But you can remember how to do these, right? There's what the solution function looks like. Well, if you don't remember how to do that, I'll take a pause right now and give it a quick recap. We're not going to go through everything. I'm just going to walk it through really fast so that we can see where that solution came from and you can start remembering how it goes. Okay, so this is the equation that we need to solve. Second order, constant coefficient, homogeneous differential equation. The way we solve this is through the characteristic polynomial. That should ring a bell. What we do is we build a polynomial that mimics the structure of the differential equation. Well, we've got to invent a variable for the polynomial. I'm recording this on a Thursday, so let's let t be that variable. So t squared minus 4t plus 3 equals 0. That is our characteristic polynomial. The power of t matches the order of derivative in each of those terms. And then we look for the roots of the characteristic polynomial, and those roots direct us to what form the solution functions will take. Uh, this factors nicely, like so. And therefore, this characteristic polynomial has roots 1 and 3. Now there's lots of different cases to go through and we're not going to relearn it all. It's just remember in this case we found that this characteristic polynomial has a pair of distinct real roots that signals that our solution functions are exponential functions where the constant in the exponent along with the variable is one of the roots. 
And so the solution function for this looks like so. Ta-da! Characteristic polynomial to the rescue. So that is what the solution function to our new but temporary ordinary differential equation looks like. So let's pick up back on the slides. And now you should be saying, oh yeah, I remember how to do those. So if I'm given a Cauchy-Euler equation, I can think about that substitution, I can produce the correct constant coefficient differential equation that goes with it, and I can solve that constant coefficient equation. And then having obtained that solution, we just have to return the variable to the original, which was x. So we don't just leave it here with s's. We need y as a function of x as our final solution function. Remember, in this case, that the substitution x equals e to the s got us to this point. So you can either reverse that equation and solve it for s and plug that back in, or you can be a little bit clever here and recognize that there are instances of e to the s in both terms already, and those just have to be replaced with x. So the first term has an e to the s already. The second term, e to the 3s, through the power of exponents, can be written as e s cubed and there are your x's, and so your final solution function here to the original Cauchy-Euler differential equation is y of x equals c1x plus c2x cubed. All right, for those of you that are bold and brave and have stuck around, I'm gonna walk you through the substitution process once so that you can see how this substitution works. And here we go. So on this page is the generic form of a Cauchy-Euler equation written for a solution function y of x. So we're going to put this substitution in play, x equals e to the s, which written backwards if you ever needed it to undo the substitution also corresponds to s equals natural log of x. So those are the substitution relationships we're gonna be working with. We're gonna use this substitution to kick the x's out of this differential equation and bring in s as the new variable. So what we have to do is substitute for the y, the y prime, the y double prime, and eventually the x squareds as well. But let's work on those derivative terms first. So, in the original function, that y prime that's there is the derivative of y with respect to x. Now we can't write derivative of y with respect to x because we don't know the solution function y of x itself. So what we're gonna do here is bring in the new variable s through the chain rule. The chain rule is great because it allows you to turn derivatives in one variable into derivatives uh, including different variables. So here is a new version of dy dx. Remember how the chain rule works. If you pretend for a second that those terms are fractions, you can see the ds is canceling out and that blob is equivalent to dy dx. It's just written with s's as the intermediate variable. Now in this particular derivative expression, we actually can resolve one of those two terms because we have a relationship between s and x. And so ds over dx is just one over x since s is natural log of x. So this, becomes dy over ds times 1 over x. Now let's try the y double prime term. Well, generally speaking, y double prime is the derivative with respect to x of the first derivative of y with respect to x. Now we have an expression for dy dx here that introduces the variable s, so we might as well use it since we now have it. Like so. Now that particular derivative is asking for the derivative of a product. Uh oh, you know what that means, product rule. So let's implement the product rule. In the first term, one over x will just hang out and we'll ask for the derivative with respect to x of dy over ds. And then we'll let the dy over ds just hang out and we will ask for the derivative with respect to x of one over x, like so. Now there's two derivatives waiting to have action. I see one of them I can do right away. Everybody knows the derivative of one over x at this point, right? Uh, the derivative term on the left is still a little bit weird because it's sort of a soup of x's and s's, and what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna do what we did before, right? So here's just an aside, the power of the chain rule. 
generally speaking, the derivative of anything with respect to x is the derivative of that thing with respect to s times the derivative of s with respect to x, right? I'm going to block this off to the side. And so what that means is that in particular on this term up here, the derivative with respect to x of dy dx is the derivative of dy dx with respect to s times ds dx. And then the trailing term here is dy over ds times negative 1 over x squared. Typo. That should have been an s. <laughs> and it's a good thing it's an s because now everything works out. So in this spot right here, this term is just a second derivative of y with respect to s. The ds dx, uh, that's something we've already known about. That's 1 over x. In the next term, we have dy over ds hanging out. And that negative 1 over x squared is not going anywhere at this point either. And, oh, look at that. There is a 1 over x squared now on both of those terms. So now I'm going to summarize what we've found so far. Pardon me while I switch pages. Okay, everything's reset. We're ready to rock. I've summarized what we found on the previous page. The first line there is the Cauchy-Euler equation we're trying to solve. The second two lines are the expressions that we get for y prime and y double prime with the substitution x equals e to the s put into play. And now we're going to complete this substitution. So this differential equation through this substitution, which creates these expressions for y prime and y double prime, lead us to this new version of the differential equation, which is ax squared. And now we'll put in this new version of y double prime. Oh, you see what's going to happen there? Isn't that awesome? So there's ax squared times y double prime plus b times x times y prime. Oh man, look what's going to happen again. When I bring down the terms for y prime, and nothing else happens to the other terms. Oh my goodness. These x squareds, they're gone. This x, it's gone. What's left? Well, a times d squared y over ds squared minus a times dy ds plus b times dy ds plus cy equals 0. And looky there, there's two dy ds terms. And so a times second derivative of y with respect to s, collect the two dy ds terms. That's a bad s. And now we finish the job. Original Cauchy-Euler equation, substitution x equals e to the s. That generates through the wonders of the chain rule, these expressions for y prime and y double prime. When we plug those into the Cauchy-Euler equation, cascade of cancellation, and we end up generating this new differential equation, which has constant coefficients, the trade-off being we've changed x out as the variable and brought s in. But now this equation we can solve, and having solved it, we can then reverse our substitution in the solution function to get back to the original x, and that is how this substitution works. And knowing how it works means that you don't have to go through these steps every single time. If you're given one of these with values of a, b, and c sitting there, just understand that the substitution x equals e to the s would take you all the way to this. You can rebuild this with your values of a, b, and c and get to solving.